Hey everybody, this is Alan Cassie, the drummer from the Black Dahlia Murder, and I'm going to give you a rundown on my whole rig. So come with me on this journey where you stand or sit where you're at. So this is the Tama Star Classic Birch Babinga kit, and this was actually Shannon Lucas's uh, before I had joined the band. Um, the dimensions are uh, 20 by 18, 8 by 7, 10 by 8, 12 by 9, and a 16 by 14. Um, these drums have a lot of attack and a lot of like mid to high range uh, tones to them and it really just cuts through and um, kind of keeps the sustain low uh, in order to uh, cut better and just be able to play fast stuff and have it all articulated and uh, yeah it just sounds really mean this is like probably a you know 15 year old kit at least and it still sounds absolutely incredible we've beating the hell out of it, but man, it is resilient. Also, this is my uh, Tama Babinga snare. Uh, it's a SLP series, um, if you can see the badge. And uh, boy, just has all the same characteristics. This thing has so much projection and attack, like it literally vibrates my face. Like uh, my sinuses, it'll clear my sinuses sometimes. It's insane. So I've been playing this uh, the whole time that I've been in the band the snare came along maybe like three or four years uh, into my being with these guys and um, this is definitely my go-to all right the symbols we have um, all Sabians it's a mix of uh, AAX and HHX and some just HH or AA um, right here we have the uh, AAX 13 inch stage hats um, Nice and quick, you know, very articulate sounds. Um, we have this uh, Mini China, it's a Dave Weckl signature, and it's the 14 inch HHX Evolution. Sorry, I'm not holding mic by my mouth. <laughs> um, so that's a 14 inch HHX Evolution, uh, Dave Weckl signature. Um, we have a AAX uh, 18 Explosion, an HHX 18 Explosion, then recently had to switch up the um, the Chinas because they stopped making the AA uh, Metal X. So now we're just running with the AA Metal uh, China. Or this might be one of the last of them, I can't remember exactly. But yeah, these are killer, they sound really nice. Um, kind of a warm but like raw tone at the same time. Then we have a 17 uh, AAX Explosion. And then this is my favorite symbol on the kit. It's the HH uh, Powerbell 22 inch ride. This thing, I just love that like, it's got, you know, kind of a dirty, non-brilliant finish to it and um, kind of kills the ring overall. So it's just uh, faster articulated stuff. I mean, that's what this whole kit setup is about, you know, when you're playing death metal uh, really fast speeds, you don't want everything bleeding into one another. So this thing is just heavy and got a big bell. I also really like that it has um, two distinct sounds. The body does not sound necessarily the same as the bell. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's my favorite ride by far that I've ever played. And then last but not least, we have the um, 10 inch AAX Splash, and then we have a, um, I can't remember the exact wording of this, but it is an HH Radia Cup, Radia Chime Cup um, bell. And uh, yeah, that's um, that's been kind of on and off the kit for a few years now. Like uh, sometimes we write material with it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we play material with it, sometimes we don't. I'd like to probably get like another splash symbol in here at some point, but for now, I think that this is like pretty much the best kit arrangement I think that I've ever like played before. I just it's enough to do a bunch of cool ideas with, but it's not like too overly excessive.
I can usually get all this stuff when I play in um, other countries and uh, yeah, so it's it's like, you know, a reliable setup for the most part. It's not too much or too little. Yeah, really enjoy that. And then finally, playing uh, Vader Sticks. Usually I play the uh, Extreme 5As. This time I was only able to get the Power 5As and I'm digging them. There's very, you know, subtle difference between the two. Uh, the Power or the Extremes are um, just slightly wider while these guys are a little bit more of a true 5A. But uh, yeah, Vader 6, man, they like hardly ever like splinter and break. It takes so much for me and uh, I, I love it. And then I have Evan's heads and I'm rocking kind of a simplistic setup. I've got just uh, G2s, which are two ply clear head for the top. And then I've got G1s, which are just one ply underneath for the resonant. Um, and then I have been flip-flopping between these Evans um, Super Tough snare heads and the Power Center Reverse Dots. Uh, I believe this Super Tough are just a two-ply, um, and that's about it. And then the Power Centers have the dot glued to the inside of the head, and then it's a one-ply, so it kind of kills like some of the overtones and um, has some of the you know sound advantages of the two-ply, but without being an entirely two-ply setup. And um, yeah, I think I think I'm starting to dig this one a little bit more. But I, I'd have to break out the power dot to remember the you know comparison. But um, both of them are pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so oh, and then finally, I guess I have um, the EQ4 batter heads on the uh, kick drums. Um, those come standard when you buy a Tama kit, um, but they're so tough and well made that we literally have never had to replace like the kick drum head unless you know something stabbed it which I think one of them got stabbed and we had to replace it <laughs> so um, these are these are really great heads and uh, yeah just this you know combination of stuff really makes the material sound I think amazing because of uh, all of the different you know qualities that they all individually have but put together it's just it's uh everything you'd want out of a death metal setup i think so as you guys might have noticed i got these really kick-ass drum lights uh it's actually from a company that has a really hard name to remember it's called drum light and um it's spelled l-i-t-e and uh these things I got them as a uh, practical answer to being put in the dark constantly by uh, lighting guys and um, just always kind of like having strobing crap and I was just like, man, I can't see my drums at all like during certain parts. So I got these and not only do they help me see everything the whole time I'm playing, but they just look awesome as well. And um, unfortunately, this company... Uh, uh, decided to call it quits I think earlier this year in 2021 and uh, but I'm glad I got this while I got it I mean it, it's really working awesome for me I love it I hope you guys will come back at some point um, but uh, yeah and then uh, with some of the other uh, tech stuff that I have I'm running um, Roland RKT uh, 30s these are my favorite triggers um, I think just Roland Tech in general is so well made. They've been, you know, making um, electronic instruments for, I think, like 30 or 40 years at least. And um, these 30s are like sensitive enough that they'll pick up, uh, you know, little things that I uh, need to do. Like if, if I'm not able to hit the drum as hard because I'm either playing faster or I'm like just trying to be steady and articulate with uh, my hits, it'll pick it up. It's, uh, if you accidentally like, you know, bump the kick with the head or something, like just trying to read, or I mean the, the beater with the head and you're trying to restabilize yourself, um, these things are just really good about not picking up some of those more accidental hits. and. Uh, I think that's because this is paired with the Roland TM2 module, um, which is what I use as the brain of the triggers. This thing is amazing. It's um, battery powered, 
Uh, I don't currently run it with batteries, but if you ever got into a pinch someplace, just four double A's, I think, and you're good to go. Then this thing has an SD card reader in it, and you can um, put in your own samples, uh, whatever you want. It's, um, it's just a kind of general purpose to input trigger uh, system. And it just works great for having two kick drums, and um, and then you got like two MIDI outs on the side here. Um, but overall, this guy is really good, and I think like pairing these two things together, just the tech they were built from the same company, so it's like they can understand each other really well, and it just it has like amazing um, response, and uh, I love it. So now I have this Yamaha MG10XU mixer, and I got this because uh, it's just got, you know, eight or ten channels, and uh, you can EQ a bunch of stuff, which is, like, absolutely important to be able to um, hear things well when you're when you have a bunch of stuff in your ears. And then finally, the tank, the Roland SP404 is uh, my sampler. It has all my click tracks on it. Man, this thing has been with the band since uh, Shannon was in there. I don't know if uh, they got it when he was in, but this thing has just been kicking the entire time. So, uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's definitely not broke yet. <laughs> But, um, and then finally, I guess, just a Telefunken um, DI. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I got going on. It's a lot of electronics for drums, but you know, uh, it all serves its purpose, so it's cool. All right, so that has been the rundown on my setup. Thank you for coming on this long journey of finding out about all of these amazing pieces of instrumentary <laughs> uh, and um, yeah so I hope you liked it